Hello everyone, my name is Kranti and our group is going to explain about different crystal structures, Bravest lattice, packing, voids and defects. Hope you have better understanding of, of these videos. Unit cell, the smallest group of atoms which has the overall symmetry of a crystal and from which the entire lattice can be built up by the repetition in three dimensions. Lattice points are the positions where you can place an atom. Therefore, you can find either, either atoms or vacancies in the lattice points of a crystal structure. Crystal structure, the smallest group of particles in the material that constitutes the repeating pattern is the unit cell of the structure. The unit cell completely defines the symmetry and structure of the entire crystal lattice, which is built up by repetition translation of the unit cell along its principal axis. Hi guys, my name is Johan and I am representing the group Illuminati. As you know, there are seven dif different types of crystal systems and I am going to describe to you two of them which are the monoclinic and triclinic crystal systems. Now, any crystal system is described by three vectors that are the edge lengths A, B and C. They are also described by the interaxial angles that are alpha, beta and gamma. So let me first describe the monoclinic systems. There are two types that is the simple or primitive lattice and the second type is the end centered or base centered lattice. So we will start off with the monoclinic simple lattice. Now this is how its structure looks like. As you can see it is a rectangular prism with a parallelogram as its base. So in this structure two of the vectors are perpendicular that is alpha equal to gamma is equal to 90 degrees and beta is not equal to 90 degrees. Now, and none of the edge lengths are equal, that is A is not equal to B, not equal to C. Now let's calculate how many spheres are there in this lattice. So since there are 8 corner atoms, that gives 1 by 8 into 8, that is equal to 1. So therefore, therefore there is only 1 sphere in the whole lattice. So as you can see, the packing density is quite low. Let's move on to the second type, which is the monoclinic N-centered lattice. Now, apart from the eight corner spheres, there are also two face, face atoms. So, in this structure, just like the previous one, none of the edge lengths are equal and two of the vectors are perpendicular. So, now let's move on to calculate the number of spheres. So, since there are eight corner atoms, that gives one by eight into eight, that is equal to one. And apart from that, there are also two face atoms giving 1 by 2 into 2 that is equal to 1. So when you add them you get 2 spheres in total. So as you can see the packing density is higher when compared to the simple structure. Now let's move on to the next type of system that is the triclinic system. There is only one type in this that is the simple triclinic lattice. So this is its structure and in this one none of the edge lengths are equal and apart from that none of the interaxial angles are also equal. That is alpha is not equal to beta, not equal to gamma, which is not, not equal to 90 degrees. None of them are perpendicular. So let, let's hear some interesting facts about the triclinic lattice. The triclinic lattice is the least symmetric of all the 14 Bravais lattices. Now, there are points of inversion at each lattice. And, and apart from that, there are points of inversion at 7 more points for each lattice point. And those 7 points are the midpoints of the edges, faces and center points. So, thus the triclinic lattice is the only lattice that has no mirror planes. I am Gokul. I am going to explain about monoclinic and triclinic primitive cells. Monoclinic. It's monoclinic primitive cell and its possible variation as center unit cell. Talking about its axial distance or edge lengths, all are unequal. Considering their axial angles, Two of the angles are orthogonal and the third differs. It may be greater than 90 or less than 90. It can act as n centered unit cell too. If you see there, the examples are monoclinic sulfur sodium chloride. And coming to triclinic, triclinic shows only primitive characteristics. All its axial distances are unequal and all the axial angles are also unequal. And they don't form orthogonal angles. Examples are Potassium dichromate and boric acid. Now I am going to explain about uh, Bravais lattices. Uh, actually, uh, 
there are uh, seven types of crystal systems namely cubic tetragonal orthorhombic rhombohedral hexagonal monoclinic and triclinic and there are four types of uh, unit cells namely bcc uh, simple cubic ccp and hcp uh, these uh, crystal systems and uh, uh, these unit cells uh, together form uh, 14 bravais lattices in different combinations um, first let us uh, just uh, see uh, the basics of a unit cell there are uh, three axes let us consider this to be origin this has x axis y axis and z axis the angle between the y axis and x axis is said to be alpha and the angle between the y axis and z axis is said to be beta and the angle between the uh, z axis and x axis is said to be gamma and then the uh, the length edge length of the unit cell along the x axis is said to be a and along y axis is said to be b and along z axis is said to be c in a cubic system all the edge lengths are same that is along that is a equal to b equal to c and uh, the angle between the every pair of um, axis is equal to 90 degrees and in tetragonal system the edge length along x axis and y axis are same but they are not equal to that of the z axis and the angle between every pair of uh, axis are same and equal to 90 degrees and in ortho orthorhombic system the uh, edge lengths are uh, totally different along x y and z axis and but the angles between the axis are same and equal to 90 degrees and in ro rhombohedral system uh, the edge length that is along x y and z all are same but the angle between the x axis and y axis and the angle between the y axis and Uh, z axis are same and the angle and also the angle between the x axis and z axis but all these are not equal to 90 degrees and in hexagonal system uh, the edge length along x axis and y axis are same but not along that of the z axis and uh, the angle between x axis and y axis and y axis and z axis is equal to 90 degrees but angle between the z axis and x axis is equal to 120 degrees and in monoclinic system all the edge lengths that is a and b a b and c are unequal and the angle between the y axis and x axis and the angle between the x axis and z axis are same and equal to 90 degrees but it is not equal to the angle between the x axis and the z axis which is beta and the final crystal system is triclinic in that uh, all the all the edge lengths are different and all the angles between the pair of axis are different and it is a most unsymmetrical bravais lattice hi my name is saidik and i am from illuminatis now i am going to explain you about the simple cubic the simple generally in a simple cubic lattice the atoms are located only at the corners of the cube and it is very closely packed um, the coordination number of a simple cubic lattice is 6 it has very low packing density uh, if you see in this picture these are the corners and there are eight corners uh, eight corners for this cube so totally Eight corners into one or uh, one square divided by one by eight is equal to one atom. So in a simple cubic lattice, there is only one atom. Now the side of the cube A. This is the side of the cube A, and uh, radius of each particle, radius of each particle R, are related as A is equal to two R. So R is uh, uh, A A is two times the R in the simple cubic. now we are we are going to see about the atomic packing fractions atomic packing fraction generally what is a atomic packing fraction atomic packing fraction is a volume of atoms in a unit volume of uh, atoms in a unit cell by volume of the unit cell here we indicate the volume of atoms in a unit cell by small v and the volume of unit cell by capital v now here n into 4 by 3 pi r cube 4 by 3 pi r cube is the volume of atom and here n refers to the number of atoms per unit cell number of atoms per un unit cell so n into 4 by 3 pi r cube by volume of a unit cell side into side into side so a cube here 4 by 3 into pi into uh, r radius means uh, zero, radius is half of the a if we take a as 1 then it is 0.5 a i have written as 1 by 2 a so if you calculate uh, calculate and substitute pi as 3.14 and divided by 6 we'll get as 0.52 so it is 52% body centered cubic in a body centered cubic structure all sides are of same length and angles between the faces are all 90 degrees 
the number of atoms in a body centered cubic structure is 2 atomic radius it is defined as half the distance between the nearest neighboring atom and a crystal for a bcc structure it is root 3 by 4a as atoms touch along the diagonal coordination number it is defined as the number of nearest neighbors that a particle has in a unit cell and for a bcc structure it is 8 because the center atom touches 4 on the top and 4 on the bottom packing efficiency it is the percentage of total space filled by the particles the packing efficiency for a bcc structure is 68% and, and it can be calculated by dividing the volume occupied by atoms in a unit cell by the total volume and multiplying it into 100 i have used some tennis balls and gems balls to show how the ccp and hcp structures look CCP stands for cubic close packing, FCC stands for face centered cubic structure and HCP is for hexagonal cubic packing. Now HCP and CCP are one of the forms in which a cubic lattice is arranged and FCC is one of the types of unit cells. Now when a cubic lattice is arranged, the first two layers are arranged in a regular pattern. When we are about to place the third layer, we have two possibilities. First, to place an atom in a tetrahedral void. This gives rise to a packing of ABAB type and this type of packing is known as HCP. When we place the atoms in the octahedral voids, the packing is ABC ABC. This is known as CCP. Now sometimes we also call it as a face centered closed structure. But remember FCC is also stand for unit cell, face centered cell. We both have same packing fractions. Octahedral voids are voids which look exactly like a octahedron when viewed in a 3D space. The metals which take CCP packing are nickel, silver, copper, gold, aluminium. The metals which take HCP packing are cadmium, cobalt, magnesium, titanium and zinc. Now coming to BCC, when we chop it off, we can see the 8 points, 8 vertices having 1 8th contribution and within them we can see one atom which is closely packed by the other 8 points. Therefore, if we take a cross section instead of the surface, we will find that radius of one corner through the central atom giving us its whole diameter or twice the radius and radius of another corner from a point here to a point here. We can conclude by using Pythagoras' theorem that if the side is A, the diagonal through the cube will be A root 3. Bringing out the relation again, we have 4R equals to A root 3, which concludes A equals to 4R by root 3 or R equals to A root 3 by 4. Again here we can conclude the total number of atoms as 1 8th contribution and one 8 points 1 8 into 8 which is 1 and 1 central atom giving us 1 total number of atoms giving us 2 therefore volume of total atoms is 2 into 4 by 3 pi r cube and volume of the cell is again a cube which can be brought into 4 by root 3 r whole cube
packing fraction is volume of the atoms divided by the volume of the cell into 100 which gives us approximately 68 percent thank you Hello, this is Ratish and I'll be explaining you about linear defects. Linear defects are nothing but dislocations caused due to the misalignment of the plane of atoms in a crystal lattice. There are basically two types of dislocations, the edge dislocations and the screw dislocations. Whereas a third type, the mixed dislocations can also occur, which comprises of both the dislocations in a single lattice. When we talk about edge dislocations, it is nothing but caused due to the uh, termination of a plane of atoms in the middle of the lattice. The adjacent planes tend to bend down towards the terminated plane to get a perfectly ordered crystal. It can be thought of about a stack of paper in which you insert half a piece of paper anywhere between the stack. So that is the terminated plane. The second type is the screw dislocations which occur due to shear stress. It can be thought of as a metal block when given a stress from one end begins to rip. It is a simple structure comprised of a helical path traced by the plane of atoms along the line of defect. This is a schematic diagram showing the crystal structures uh, having planar defect in nickel nickel alloy. So this is the planar uh, grain boundary with the grains that are aligned in different different positions in their respective boundaries. The topic I'll be covering is planar defects. Planar defects is nothing but existence of grain boundaries that separate regions of different crystalline orientations with within the polycrystalline solid. The atoms in the grain boundaries will not be in perfect crystalline alignment. These grain boundaries are a result of uneven growth within uh, the solid 
during the formation of the crystal. Different stacking sequences of closed pack crystals can also cause planar defects. Examples of um, planar defects can be seen in nickel nickel alloys and aluminium aluminium alloys. So, antecedent defect. It's a defect which happens in any metal. It uh, often have, uh, happens in metals like A, P, B form. So, if you see this, uh, there, are, there are two metals here. So, in this, if this is replaced by another metal, the metal of this thing, then uh, this is an antecedent defect. This is also called as B subscript A. And if this is same and this thing is replaced by this, then this is called as A subscript B. Now, let's explain this with a small delicious example of jellies. So, these are the metal atoms. So, these are the metal atoms. So, if we are re going to replace this, with this, then this is called as B subscript A. So, if this is the same and this thing is going to be replaced by this, then this is known as A subscript B. So, with this, we can. So, with this, we can uh, understand the concept of antecedent defect. Well, well. We know that solids can be crystalline or amorphous. Crystalline solids exhibit a periodic crystal structure. The positions of atoms or molecules occur on, on repeating fixed distances determined by the unit cell parameters. However, the arrangement of atoms or molecules in most crystalline materials is not perfect. The regular patterns are interrupted by crystallographic defects. I'll be explaining point defects in this video. Point defects are defects that occur only at or around a single lattice point. They are not extended in space in any dimension. And I am going to be demonstrating the point defects in a two-dimensional plane. Vacancy defects are lattice sites which would be occupied in a perfect crystal but are vacant. So as you can see, in a perfect crystal, this position would also have been occupied by, by an atom or a molecule. But in the defect, this space is left empty. The vacancy moves in the opposite direction to the site which used to be occupied by the moving atom. So when the atom moves here, the vacancy moves in the opposite direction and so forth in the entire crystal structure. As, as the atoms occupy the vacancies, the vacancies move in the opposite direction. A vacancy in an ionic solid is also sometimes called a short key defect. Now, Interstitial defects are atoms that occupy a site in the crystal structure at which there is usually not an atom. So in this crystal lattice, the atoms are fully occupied here. But there are some sites called interstitial sites in between the atoms. So another atom can occupy these sites. So this is how you get an interstitial defect. They are generally high energy configurations. Small atoms in some crystals can occupy interstices without high energy such as hydrogen and palladium. And another practical example where the interstitial defect can be used to good effect is uh, in uh, building semiconductor chips such as silicon uh, by doping. So this is why the interstitial defects are actually advantageous to us. Thank you.